You know, this conversion between milliwatt and dBm is all a question of practicing it again and again and again once you get the threes and the tens right, and then also learning some numbers that keep coming and coming again. So let's do some exercises together. Keep in mind that when you do dBm with this m term, you are always referring to your reference point, which is one milliwatt. So if I ask you to express something in dBm, I'm also asking you to convert it from milliwatt into dBm with one milliwatt being the reference. So if I say, hey, let's take one milliwatt and express that in dBm. Well, what you should say is say, well, what is the difference between this number you're showing to me and my reference number, which is one milliwatt? And of course, there is no difference, right? They're exactly the same number. So you say, well, the difference is zero. So that is zero dBm. And you know that log scale is a bit special because it's about adding numbers and comparing numbers. So we seem to be having a zero here. It just means that it's exactly my source, one milliwatt. There is no difference. It doesn't mean there is no power. There is power, right? There is one milliwatt of power. OK, let's practice a little bit this uh, ones and tens rule. Let's say I give you 10 milliwatts. And I ask you to configure that to be on dBm, convert it to dBm. If you remember my rules of tens and always start with the tens, you say, all right, what is my reference value? One milliwatt. What do I need to do to that one milliwatt to get 10 milliwatt? Well, you need to multiply it by 10. So if you multiply it by 10, remember every time you multiply by 10, you add 10 dB. So here I multiply it by 10 once, and therefore I add 10 dB once. So this is going to be 10 dBm. And I keep saying 10 dB, but I keep it as obvious that it's 10 dBm because my reference is still 1 milliwatt. So 10 milliwatt or 10 dBm, you're saying exactly the same thing. Let's take another number and suppose I ask you to convert 100 milliwatts into dBm's. So the question is the same. How do I do it? It's by checking what I need to do on 1 milliwatt to get to 100 milliwatt. And the only tools you have at your disposal are these rules of tens and these rules of threes. So you say, OK, if I take 1 milliwatt and I multiply by 10, I'm going to get 10 milliwatt. If I take that 10 milliwatt and I multiply it by 10 again, I get 100 milliwatt. Okay? So what I did is that I multiply by 10 the first time. And when I do this, I add 10 dBm. And then I multiply by 10 a second time. And when I do this, I add 10 dBm a second time. So be careful. Every time I multiply by 10, I add 10 dBm. So I added 10 dBm here. And I also added 10 dBm there. So in total, what I did is add 20 dBm. Remember, every time you multiply by 10, you add 10 dBm. So I added 10 dBm twice, and that's why it's 20 dBm. OK, so what about 200 milliwatts? So I don't need to restart from scratch, right? I'm already at 100 milliwatt, and I already know it's 20 dBm. But I could do the same math, right, again, to get back to this 20 dBm. And I say from this 100 milliwatt, what I need to do to that 100 milliwatt to get to 200 milliwatt? So I can do 100 times 2 equals 200 milliwatt. So what I do to that 100 is that I multiply it by 2. And you remember, every time I multiply by 2, every time I double, I add 3 dB. So I was already at 100 milliwatt, which is 20 dBm. If I multiply that 100 by 2, I add 3 dB. So that's going to be plus 3 dB. And as you can guess, my result is going to be 23 dBm. Every time you double, you add 3 dB. So you multiply on one side, and you add on the other. So it could be more complex. For example, if I ask you 300 milliwatts, how much is that in dBm? Well, then it's more complicated, right? Because if you start from 100, you can multiply by 2. 
Okay, that's 200, but you cannot multiply that one by two. You can get 400, and 400 would be, again, multiplied by two, so that would be three more. That's 26 dBm. That's easy enough. But 300, that's somewhere in the middle. So there are some numbers for which, well, you may have to look up online. There are some milliwatt to dBm conversion tables, and for most of the complex operations, you won't use those tables. But doing this rule of tens of threes is easy if you have easy numbers, and it's easy if you have numbers that come back all the way around. So this one, for example, is almost 25 dBm for your information. And if you look online, you'll see it's 24 to 77 or something. But there are some numbers that you cannot calculate very easily. Okay? So that is the case when you have a complex number, but sometimes you can find tricks to make it work. So for example, if I ask you 50 milliwatt, how much would that be? So if you go back from 1 milliwatt, you can say, well, same thing. I can multiply by 10, I have 10. Then times 2 is going to be 20. Times 3 is going to be 40. That's not going to work well. But if you think 50s are something that you can work with, because you can say, I start from 1 milliwatt, I multiply it by 10, and that's going to be 10. So that's plus 10 dB already. But what I can do then is to say, I take 10, I multiply it by 10 again, and that's going to be 100, and that's plus 10 dB already, and we're back to our 20 dBm value. And 50 milliwatt is actually half of 100. So you can take 100 and divide it by 2, and that's going to be 50. And you know that every time you divide by 2, you remove 3 dB. So you were at 20 dBm, which is 100 milliwatts, and you remove 3 dB, so that gives you 20 minus 3, which is 17 dBm. So you see, when you have a 5, you can always go to the next 10 and divide by 2, and that's removing 3 dB. That works as well. So that milliwatt to dBm conversion works that way. You take from the 1 milliwatt world, and then you try to climb your way up to whatever number you need to achieve. Keep in mind, you always want to start with the 10s, because if you start with the 2s, you'll get into trouble. I can give you many examples of that, but don't even try. Go to the tens, you'll be safer. All right, let me wipe this out and try the other way around. Try to convert dBm's into milliwatts. Okay, suppose now I ask you to convert 30 dBm into milliwatts. You want to know how much that is. So let's try. What if you want to convert dBm into milliwatts? Well, it's the same logic, right? It's the only difference is that you know what the final result is going to be, 30 dBm, and starting from 1 milliwatt, you try to find how you got your way there. So let's take, for example, 30 dBm. Start from 1 milliwatt and climb your way using the tens first and then the threes if you have to, to find 30 dBm. So 1 milliwatt times 10, that's going to be 10 milliwatt, and you know that's 10 dBm. If you want to go from 10 dBm to 30 dBm, can you add 10s again? Yes, you can. So, and you know every time you add 10, you multiply by 10. So, I can add 10 here. So, if I go plus 10 dBm, that's going to be 20. And to get to 20 dBm, I multiply this by 10. So, I go from 10 times 10 to 100 milliwatt. All right, I'm at 20 dBm here. Let me write it down so it's clear and I want to get to 30 dBm, can I add 10 dBm? Well, yes, I can. I will get exactly there. And I know every time I add 10, I multiply by 10. So plus 10 dBm is going to be 30 dBm. And that means I multiply this by 10, so it's going to be 100 times 10, 1,000. So 30 dBm is 1,000 milliwatt, which is 1 watt. You see how that works? So if I want to carry on and say, hey, what about 36 dBm? How many milliwatts is that? Let me continue. From my 30 dBm, can I multiply by 10? That is to say, can I add 10 dBm to get there? Mm, no, I will have to remove some dBs afterwards, so I cannot. But can I add 3s? Yeah, 3s I can. And I know every time I add 3 dBm, I multiply by 2, I double. So 30 plus 3 is going to be 33 dBm, and I know that this is that result times 2, I double. So that's going to be 1,000 times 2, 2,000 
milliwatt. From 33 to 36, can I add 3? Yes, I can add 3, and every time I add 3, I multiply by 2. So 36 dBm, that will be this, times 2 again, so 2,000 times 2 equals 4,000 milliwatts, which is 4 watts. This number happens to be the max power, by the way, you can use in some 2.4 links in the FCC domain for 2.4 gigahertz. So you see that how it works. That works for big numbers. That also works for small numbers. In the wireless world, you'll see numbers like RSSI is minus 50, minus 50 dBm. How much is that? That's a very common value, and we say it's a good value, it's a good power. So how do you get from 1 milliwatt to theirs? Well, you can divide by 10, right? If you go from 0 dBm, which is 1 milliwatt, and you want to get to minus 50, well, you start by removing 10 dBm. And I would be dividing this by 10, right? So that would be 0 0.1 watt. If you want to go from minus 10 to minus 50, you would do this four times. So you would do minus 10, they would give you minus 20. Minus 10, minus 30. Minus 10, minus 40. And then again, minus 10, that would be another 50. And every time you do minus 10, you divide by 10. So you would have 0 0.01 here, 0 0.001 here, 0 0.0001 here, and 0 0.00001 here. And this is in milliwatt, of course. So when you get a power of minus 50 dBm, what you're receiving is the equivalence. Of course, it's an electromagnetic field, right? There is no jolt, but it's an electromagnetic field. And its power is equivalent to 0 0.00001 milliwatt. Pretty weak, right? We know that networks stop working by minus 90 dBm. That's pretty much where you, you'll give up on your network. That means you have four more to go, right? Four more zero, and that's the kind of power we get in Wi-Fi. Amazing, right? All right, so that's a few exercises to get you started. Now, if you want to keep practicing, look up online some tables and try to find the values from milliwatt to dBm without looking. Always use the tens and the fives, right? So the five would be the three, three dBm uh, to add and double. Do not try to get something fancy like 400, etc. That would be too complex. But try to use the tens, the 23, the 26, everything that is plus three uh, values. And in milliwatts, that multiplies by 10 or multiplies by two. Don't get into the two complex values. But keep practicing a little bit. And you'll see that numbers that keep coming again all the time are the 20 dBm's, 17 dBm's, 23 dBm's, 30 dBm's. 36 dBm, those come all the time. And in the lower number, those kind of numbers come often. But here, very typically, you do not need to calculate those very often because when you have to make this conversion from dBm to milliwatt, it is typically because you want to calculate how much the access point is sending. When you want to calculate how much the circuit is receiving, well, most of the time, you are happy with the dBm value unless you're designing the circuit, and you need to really convert that value into milliwatt electricity into your card. But, you know, that's not what we do here. Most of the time, we just are happy to know how much that is as an equivalence. But we need to calculate the power on the way out because that's what we're going to send, and there is some regulation issues there. We cannot exceed some values that are determined by relatory bodies. So keep working on that value until you are comfortable with the conversion, and that's something you need to know for the CCNA wireless exam.